I studied abroad in China this past summer. It was pretty cool. I learned a lot, and I am making a video series on topics about studying abroad, living in China, and the logistics of it all, in case you're planning to travel to China yourself, or just plain curious about this kind of stuff. Enjoy! Hello everyone, my name is Mallory, and today I'm going to be talking about banking in China. I am no expert in banking in China or America where I'm from, but I did have to set up a Chinese bank account while I was studying abroad in China, so I will share with you a bit about my experience and some of the tips that you might uh, find useful if you yourself might need to open a bank account in China. So once my study abroad group arrived in Qingdao, which was where our host university was located, we went to set up bank accounts. Now, the students who had X1 visas, which meant that they were staying for both the summer and the fall terms, were able to set up accounts at Bank of China. Those of us who had X2 visas, because we were only staying for the summer term, were not able to set up accounts at the Bank of China branch near our university. We had to go to China Construction Bank. Our professors came with us, some of our Chinese language partners also came with us to the banks. Our language partners were native Chinese students who were majoring in English, who we became friends with, and they often came for moral support as well as helping us understand things and translate, and when oftentimes we had to split up as groups because some people were able to go to the Bank of China branch and some other people had to go to the China Construction Bank, therefore we had enough people who spoke fluent Chinese to help us out at both banks. It's definitely difficult setting up a Chinese bank account when you're only going to be in the country for a certain amount of time. We definitely had a bit of difficulty negotiating with some of the bank branches to help us set up accounts. In order to set up a Chinese bank account, you will need a Chinese phone number. And we made our bank accounts after everybody had gotten a Chinese SIM card, because on a Chinese SIM card, you get a Chinese phone number attached to that. When we were filling out documentation, when we had to set up our bank accounts, convert money, and close bank accounts. And we always had to, where we had to sign our name or put our signature, we had to write our American, our English names in capital letters in print. A regular sort of, you know, scrawly script loopy signature will not fly, at least at the China Construction Bank that I went to. You also need to write your last name first, as is Chinese custom, as the family name always comes first and then your given name comes after. Again, if you are writing in English letters, you need to capitalize everything. Whenever you are filling out important documentation, always use a water-based black ink pen. The bank always had pens that obviously were up to their standard, but if you are bringing your own pen that you want to use, make sure that it's black ink and make sure that it's either a gel or a fountain pen. Because we were setting up temporary short-term bank accounts at China Construction Bank, the bank cards that they gave us, the credit cards, the debit cards, didn't even have our names printed on them. It was just our account number. And what was nice and was very convenient for us is that the card number was also the same number as our account. So we didn't have a whole lot of different numbers to have to work with. It was just one number that we used for pretty much everything. Interestingly, PIN numbers in China are six digits. There are four here in America, but there are six in China, so just that's a random fact to know. Once we got our bank accounts open and we got our bank cards, we were able to use the ATM machines at the bank branch to then put our converted Chinese renminbi into so we could deposit money into our accounts. And we actually converted back at the Beijing airport when we landed in China, we converted some of our US dollars, our US cash, into Chinese yuan cash. Some banks don't actually physically deal with physical currency exchange. Our China Construction Bank could internally convert our wired over USD into renminbi, but for the students who still had some US dollars in cash on them, China Construction Bank did not have the ability to take that physical cash and give them Chinese renminbi in cash instead. So therefore, those students at China Construction Bank who had accounts there, who still had US dollars to convert into Chinese renminbi, had to go over to the Bank of China branch across the street and have them convert their USD into renminbi in cash, take that cash, that Chinese renminbi, back across the street to China Construction Bank and then deposit that into their Chinese bank accounts. 
once we had our bank accounts and we had money in them, we linked them to our Alipay mobile apps because China uses mobile banking and it is so convenient once you have it set up. That's probably one of the things that I really miss about China is just how convenient mobile payment really is. After we had our bank accounts created, then we had to contact our banks back home in America to wire over money to our Chinese banks. We had to tell them very specifically to input our names in all capital letters and input them with our last name first and our given name second if they were able to do that. Make sure that before you go to China, if you are going to be wiring money over from an American account to a Chinese account, that you sort out on the American side everything in terms of wiring money over. I did this beforehand. It saved me a lot of hassle when I was in China making calls and trying to wire over money. A lot of other people did kind of have some blips here and there in terms of the whole wiring process. A lot of people, understandably so, called their parents, gave their parents information, and then their parents either called the bank or went to the bank and had the wire transferred. I personally just did it all myself because I felt comfortable enough doing it, even if it's still kind of a scary experience, but I would highly recommend talking to your bank ahead of time just to clear everything up. For example, the bank that I use every day is actually a credit union, and because they're small, they don't actually do wire transfers if they aren't through businesses. So therefore, I had to use an older bank account that I had set up when I was a kid that's from a much bigger branch, um, and they were able, obviously, to do international transfers very smoothly. But the fact that if I hadn't checked with my credit union before going to China, I would have definitely been in a whole lot of hurt. After you wire over money from your American account to your Chinese account, I know that for everyone who made accounts with China Construction Bank, we all had to physically go to that China Construction Bank branch and talk to a worker there to have them convert the money from US dollars into Chinese renminbi. I'm not sure about the people who made accounts at the Bank of China branch. I think for some of them, the conversion automatically happened, but for some of them, they still had to go there in person to have their US dollars converted to renminbi. Also, the day that we went to China Construction Bank to convert our money from USD to renminbi was a day when the conversion rate dropped meaning we actually lost a bit of money. Not a whole lot, but we did lose some. And then of course the next day, the conversion rate bounced back up. So we obviously really didn't have many days that we could even go to the bank based on our class schedule. But if you do have some flexibility in your schedule about when you can actually go to the bank to convert money, make sure you check the conversion rate beforehand. When you are going to close your Chinese bank account, make sure that you withdraw as much money from your Chinese account as you can from the ATM beforehand because it will just speed up the whole process of closing down your account. You might not be able to take out a few of the last dollars or cents and that's fine because at the window, the worker at the very end will give you that to you in cash. Banking was stressful. <laughs> we had to go to the bank many, many times to sort things out to get them to do things before they closed because again we only had a few hours often in the afternoon in order to take the bus to get to the bank to have things done and then to get back people always took their lunch break which was oftentimes when we would get there and then we'd have to wait through the lunch break and obviously there are other people at the bank too and you have to get a little ticket and wait in line and wait for them to call your number what was nice though is that one of our professors did actually befriend the bank manager at the China Construction branch, so therefore when we were telling our professor, oh, what day we were thinking about going back to the bank to, you know, convert our money or to close our accounts, he was able to message the bank manager so that they were actually expecting us. I would always recommend taking a fluent speaker with you whenever you're doing something that has pretty important stuff involved and I would consider banking to be a must so bring along someone who can speak fluently in the language to help you clear up information. 
I think the only time that we didn't have a fluent speaker with us was when we were closing our accounts at the very end of the summer because closing accounts was definitely by far the easiest process that we had with our bank branch. I am no expert in banking again. These were just some of the things that I encountered when banking in China. But yeah, if you have any questions about banking or if anything I said was unclear, please feel free to drop some comments in the comment section below and I will be happy to answer as best as I can. That's the end of this video, which is part of my Benjamin A. Gilman Scholarship Follow On Service Project, since I did receive a scholarship that helped me afford studying abroad in China this summer. If you are interested in studying abroad and are a university student, I recommend applying for a Gilman Scholarship to potentially help you afford studying abroad. I will leave a link to their website in the description box below. That's the end. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and share it wherever you see fit. And if you would like to continue seeing more videos from me in the future, just hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. So in the meantime, stay fabulous.